Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about bedside neuropsychological assessment. I am Dr. Suresh Padadmat, Professor of Psychiatry, working at Nimans, Bangalore. Before I start my presentation, I would like to place this disclaimer. This presentation is for academic and training purpose only. For clinical opinion, please do contact your doctor. Conflict of interest? None. In this video, I am going to discuss about bedside neuropsychological assessment, what are the brain lobe dysfunction and associated syndromes and how to do bedside neuropsychological assessment. The target audience are doctors, psychiatrists, neurologists, nurses and mental health professionals, healthcare professionals, patients suffering from chronic neurological illness and general public at large. Let's discuss about neuropsychological assessment. Neuropsych assessment done by a clinician makes it possible for to start evaluation earlier. It can be done daily or weekly basis. Mark the progress of the patient and you can give feedback to the patient and their family members what to expect and initiate the rehabilitation process earlier. What is the need for this? Why should a clinician do neuropsych assessment? To know the baseline of the deficit, to localize the lesion, to know the prognosis, that is, by doing follow up assessment by clinician himself can prognosticate the case, to assess the capacity of consent of the patient, to assess the capacity of various functions such as maybe operating bank account, driving, entering into any legal contract, or making a will, and also. If it is done by the clinician by himself and he will be able to understand the before and after neurosurgical intervention, what are the deficits and whether it is improving or not. Further, there may be a legal requirement for fitness to job after the injury. Insurance and compensation, especially a person has met with an head injury accident and now he is asking for compensation. It may be a road traffic accident. Again, neuropsych assessment plays a very important role to assist the court in deciding whether the person has competency or not. That means competency is a legal term which will be determined by the court and here the clinician is going to assess the clinical capacity and also will assist the court in deciding competence. To know the effective of any intervention, either it may be medicine, rehabilitation process or else any cognitive retraining or else if somebody has come up with a new applications or else maybe a hardware. So to know the effectiveness, you need to know the baseline cognitive assessment and also once the intervention is done, how he is doing. So it is basically for new research purposes also. Now let's understand what are the drawback of this comprehensive neuropsych assessment instead of bedside. The comprehensive assessment requires two to three hours in general. But for a detailed assessment, it will last somewhere around 3 to 5 hours depending upon the patient's motivation or else the patient's illness. At the same time, availability of the trained manpower that is clinical neuropsychologists are very less. And also assessment is done in one specific area of the brain may not depict the whole thing. And each function tested requires multiple assessment maybe over a period of time. And also at the same time we should know each functions tested is not a watertight compartment. Both it is for bedside also and neuropsych also. You need to know what are the tests should be administered. And at the same time you should remember brain function area is not a watertight compartment. Suppose if you are testing for something, it may be for parietal function. When you give an instruction, the patient has to listen to them. He has to see. He has to perform. That means he will be using his frontal lobe, he is using occipital lobe, temporal lobe to perform parietal function. That means there is no one function to say or one test to say this is specific to that area. Basically, we are doing this assessment for localization purpose and also for prognosticating the purpose. Hence, the assessment done by a clinician will play a major role in the prognosticating the case. And also, please do remember, 
the patient performance on cognitive test depends upon various other factors such as whether the patient is fatigued whether the patient is on medications whether he is using drug abuse comorbid medical condition whether the patient has sensory impairment is unable to hear because of his aged problem or else he has sensory impairment he has cataract he cannot see or else physical disability because of arthritis is is unable to perform and whether the patient is cooperative whether the patient is depressed that means motivation will play a major role whether the patient is able to understand the language appropriate culturally appropriate tests and also whether we are using any suitable instrument for assessment hence all these play a major role in neuropsych assessment hence a serial assessment by the clinician on day to day basis or weekly basis or else even in the opd basis plays a major role so let's discuss how the neuropsych assessment is done before we do that let's understand the lobe functions of the brain we will discuss each lobe how they function and what are the deficits and then how to assess them so we will go in that order let's understand cognitive tests follows localization rather than pathology that means the cognitive tests were specific for specific for localization so we may do mri and ct scan we may localize but the extent of impairment will be known only by cognitive test that is by neuropsych assessment so it is important for the clinician to know what are the test to be done how to prognosticate the case hence it is responsibility of each clinician to know the neuropsych assessment at the same time one clinician should know single stand alone neuropsych assessment will not give give you much information it has to be multiple assessments over a period of time initially you have done the assessment you know what are the areas he is able to do functioning and later in the follow up in the opd you can do specific functions where the deficits were there that means you can funnel out and also focus on only on those deficits tests can be done at the same time bedside assessment can be simple can be short easily trainable to the healthcare workers and reliable not only that the assessment should be done timely and if required the clinician should do in the multiple installment imagine if a patient is made to sit for 3 to 4 hours and to do the neuropsych assessment think about his fatigue and also at the same time motivation to do the test hence by doing bedside or in the opd plays a major role what are the prerequisite for neuropsych assessment how you should do what are the requisition you you should know when we before perform neuropsych assessment first and the foremost before you jump into any neuropsych assessment please take a detailed history take about the demographic details what about the education occupation since when he is not working so those information has to be taken the onset of illness course of illness any precipitating factors for this deficit try to get information from multiple sources it may be from the family members relatives at the job place call these colleagues so seek information from multiple sources and also very important is know the activities of daily living ask the family members especially the spouse father and mother from the morning how he is able to function independently or dependently ask at what time he gets up whether he is able to go to the toilet by himself whether he is able to locate the toothbrush paste whether he is able to apply whether he is able to brush himself whether he is able to do toilet whether he is able to clean himself bathing dressing asking for food reading newspaper how much he is independent and dependent this will give you the battery of cognitive test on day to day basis at the same time social and occupational functioning also to be assessed to know whether the patient how he is able to function or else he is unable to do the function and he has been removed from the job at the same time whether the family whether the family is able to take him to the social function or else are they afraid whether the patient has behaved very rudely in the social functioning those need to be asked and also check for any recent behavioral changes in the patient 
and more important is know the premorbid functioning and the educational status. Imagine the patient is high functioning, maybe a bank manager. Now he is unable to do even a simple calculation. That means cognitive deficit is very severe. Another example, the patient before the brain insult, he has not studied. He used to do poorly on academics. Now if you do the arithmetics, it will be again poor. That means knowing the premorbid functioning is very essential. At the same time, check for any physical illness. Maybe cataract, maybe loss of hearing, hard of hearing, diabetes, hypertension, and whether he is taking any medication, any drug abuse, alcohol use, and also check for family history and personal history of the patient. Do a thorough general physical examination to know what are the deficits, and also see whether he has any physical disability, whether he has any stroke or weakness mental status examination and also gross cognitive function is essential and in every patient please do mini mental status examination that will give you a rough estimate of his cognitive function investigation may be ct mri and please do remember multiple follow up assessments will give you a good neuropsych assessment uh, a picture that means you you will be able to get the a complete picture of the patient's cognitive function. During the assessment, what are the essential things you should notice? First and the foremost, see whether the patient is cooperative, what is his physical appearance, whether he is very clean or else half of his body is not clean, he is neglected, whether there is any, any behavioral disturbances that needs to be checked, whether the person is conscious, aware, attention and concentration sustained or not, whether he is crying, any extra behavior, hallucination or else crying, what is his emotional status, that needs to be checked and whether he is cooperative, whether he is fresh or else he is fatigued. Imagine the patient is waiting for the doctor or the neuropsych assessment for 4 hours, do you think will he be cooperative? Hence all this information is very essential at the same time what is his motivation to do undergo test today and also does he have any biological needs whether he wants to go to toilet or else he is hungry thirsty those need to be kept in mind before you jump into the assessment let's discuss about lobe functions without that you will not be able to understand why we are doing certain tests so let's discuss that as we know these are the various parts of our brain frontal lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe occipital lobe, cerebellum and brainstem. Let's focus on these lobes. At the same time, please remember, cognitive assessment, whatever we do, is not specific to any area of the brain. Whenever you do the assessment, that means multiple parts of the brain will be involved in executing that function. Because, as you know, whenever we perceive we perceive through eyes, nose, hearing, by touch, feeling it. So that means we perceive and when we execute, we will execute through motor system. That means multiple sensory involvement will be there and also thinking process. And whenever the person, the examiner gives some instruction, you need to hear them. That means auditory temporal lobe will be involved. Patient has to see, occipital lobe will be involved. Here we are giving a rough assessment, not very clear that this test will test this part. No, it is a multiple brain parts will be involved in each test. Let's now go to the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe, these are the functions. First and the foremost is executive function, that is, initiation, planning of any action problem solving, judgment, anticipation, attention and concentration, scanning the environment, awareness, personality function also occurs in the frontal lobe including even temporal lobe also. Expressive language, how does he speak? That is motor part of the speech is in the frontal lobe. Emotional expression, inhibition of the behavior, that is 
whether the person is able to control his behavior, inhibit his behavior. That is a very important function of the frontal lobe. Abstract and concept formation, working memory and judgment. These are the few frontal lobe functions. Let's discuss about frontal lobe deficits. If there is a lesion in the frontal lobe, how do they present? What are the different types of syndrome seen? The first and the foremost, which is very common, is ventromedial orbitofrontal cortex syndrome. It is also called as frontal lobe personality. It is in the Broadman's area 10, 11, 12, and 47. If the lesion is there, this is how they present. Please remember it is orbitofrontal, that means front, frontal, orbitofrontal. Here the patient will be impulsive, unkempt, indulges in prank, lack of judgment, over familiarity loss of inhibition, boisterous, emotional liability, inability to, to function appropriately in social situation. Please remember this, orbit of frontal that means the patient comes outside, is very boisterous, is very restless, unkempt, impulsivity is seen. So frontal lobe personality disease. But opposite to that, dorsolateral syndrome, that is dorsolateral convex syndrome it is. Here, the patient goes back, he is withdrawn, apathy, difficulty in concentration, working memory deficit, loss of creativity and curiosity, decreased motivation, loss of initiative, loss of curiosity, reduced verbal output and behavioral slowness. That is frontal abolic syndrome is the commonest name given. In orbitofrontal he goes front, in dorsolateral convex the patient goes back that means withdrawn behavior is seen. One more important syndrome that is Foster Kennedy syndrome. It is caused due to tumor of the frontal lobe. In this there is ipsilateral optic atrophy and contralateral papilledema is seen. Now let's move into frontal lobe tests. You have known the function, you know commonest lesions. Now how do we do frontal lobe test that is neural psychological assessment. There are various batteries available. They are called as frontal assessment battery. But here I am going to give you few simple tests which can be done bedside or else on OPD basis. But again I am reminding you, these tests are not specific to frontal lobe. Although the function occurs there, to execute these functions, multiple parts of the brain is required. First and the foremost, how to assess attention and concentration. The best way to do is digit forward and digit backward. Whenever you do this digit span test, the instruction should be given clearly to the patient that I will say certain numbers. After finishing those numbers, you need to repeat them. So please pay attention. You need to tell those numbers one second, one number has to be told. For example, you have to tell 5, 8, 2. Then the patient has to repeat. 5, 8, 2. That means one trial has to be done and the patient has understood then only you will start digit forward test and similarly digit backward test. Please remember the patient need to understand the instruction whether he is able to understand your language whether he has a difficulty in hearing those need to be checked before you start this assessment. Now if the patient is unable to understand numbers what should be done? The best one is weak forward and week backward. Ask the patient to tell the weeks, days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday that you have to ask him to tell and also tell in the reverse order or else even months forward and backward can be done. So these are the easiest way of assessing attention and concentration. Now let's move on to the second important function, working memory. What is working memory? It is a retention of certain information which is kept readily accessible to solve the task in hand. For example, serial subtraction. When you ask a patient to do serially subtract 7 from 100, he need to subtract 100 minus 7, that is 93, 93 minus 7. So he has to do serially. If he is unable to do 100 minus 7, ask him for 40 minus 3. Serially I need to subtract. So see what are the omissions and commission. At least he has to do 5 subtractions and see how much of commission and omission is done. That is testing of working memory. The other important is similarities that is conceptualization. 
in what way they are alike is the important question you have to ask. Similarities. Similarities between an orange and a an banana. What are they? So he need to understand. If he is able to say fruits, very good. He will give him the full score. What is the similarities between a table and a chair? A rose and a lotus. So these are the various questions can be asked. Moving to the fourth test. Lexical fluency. Please remember it is different from verbal fluency. In lexical fluency, you will ask the person to produce as many number of words beginning from S in 60 seconds. If he is able to produce more than 9 words, that is normal. If it is 6 to 9, that means there is a mild deficit. Anything less than 3 words, that means there is a serious problem. Hence, here lexical fluency is basically asking a person to produce as many words either by S or any P so that the person will be able to fluently name, uh, produce those words. Now, moving to the other important fifth test. This is also called as Luria test. Here, it is easily called as fist edge palm test or else motor series test. Here, the patient will be asked to do the fist, edge and palm test. The examiner need to perform this fist, edge, palm test. Fist, edge, palm. Patient should be asked to do along with the examiner. Ask the patient to do this fist, edge, palm. Once trial is done, ask the patient to do fast. Fist, edge, palm. Fist, edge, palm. So if he is able to do, that means he is able to do Luria test successfully. If there is any omission or any commission need to be noted. Moving to the important point here. Here, if he is able to do more than 6, that means he is doing very well. If it is more than 3, that means there is some problem. Patient is unable to even to follow the examiner. So, this has to be a serious problem. Moving to the go no go no go test. This is again you have to give a clear instruction to the patient. The patient should be sitting in front of the examiner and the examiner will clearly say that tap once when I tap twice. You need to understand when the examiner tap twice, you need to tap once. And do not tap when I tap twice. When the examiner taps twice, he should not do the Tap. So here you have to do one or two trial and then once the patient has understood when the examiner tap once the patient has to tap twice. If the examiner taps twice he should not tap. So here now the examiner will tap only once one and again two and see the response of the patient. So if there are no errors his frontal lobe function is very good one or two errors there is a mild more than two errors that means there is severe problem so these are this is go no go test has to be done coming to the seventh that is prehension behavior that is utilization you need to clearly give a oral command do not take my hand or else do not shake my hand patient is sits with his palm on his knees the examiner will sit in front of him or stand in front of him and he will give the command do not shake my hand Examiner will directly take the hand towards the patient. See what is his reaction? If he doesn't do anything, again he will go and touches the palm of the patient he withdraws. See what is the reaction of the patient? The patient doesn't, does he react? Does not react? Or else the patient immediately grabs the examiner's hand. It is almost like a grasp reflex. So you will know there is a release reflex has occurred. So this is prehension behavior. This is do not take my hand test is a very important test. The next one is sucking reflex or else pout snout rooting reflex. The sucking reflex is elicited by stroking the lips of the patient with the finger. Keep the finger on the patient lips and tap using the knee hammer. See for the pouting lip reflex or else sucking reflex is seen and also try to at the angle of the mouth by using the knee hammer whether if you are able to touch and move whether there is any uh, reflexes seen uh, basically rooting reflexes is there or not 
So this is a very important test especially seen in Alzheimer's dementia. Coming to the palma mental reflexes. Here you need to scratch the palm of the patient and see whether there is any twitching seen in the chin. So that is palma mental reflex. Now take a pen and paper. Invite the patient to copy this diagram. If he is able to exactly copy it, that means he is doing well. If there is a problem in the frontal lobe, many of the patient will have perseveration. They will not be able to control their behavior. They will continue to draw unless the patient's pen and paper is taken. Or else, ask him to draw these elliptical things to be done. Whether the patient is able to do or else he is continuously doing it. And these plus zero plus zero this also can be done and see whether the patient is able to copy exactly or doing it in a perseveration manner. The other important is stroke test. Here, the instruction should be given to the patient clearly. Name the color of the word, not to read the word. Here, the first word is yellow. It is written, he should not say yellow. He should say red color, black, orange. So you need to say that green blue you need to name the color not to read them so that is stroop test and how is he performing on stroop test need to be seen and at the same time frontal lobe also gives a very important regarding the behavior of the patient how is he dressed how is he behaving how is he able to perform when certain tasks are given and also in a socially appropriate situation how the patient is behaving all these need to be documented in frontal lobe function Let's move into the other second important temporal lobe functions. The temporal lobe function. The temporal lobe functions are memory, especially long term memory, perception of the music and also retention of music memory, personality of the person. Also, it is there in the frontal lobe, here also in temporal lobe. Language comprehension, that is Wernicke's area, auditory reception and emotions. All these are the important functions of the temporal lobe. So let's understand what are the temporal lobe deficits and syndrome seen here. So if there is a deficit in the temporal lobe, there will be comprehension difficulty, memory deficits, difficulty in music perception, understanding the music, organization and categorization of the deficits will be seen classically, changes in sexual activity, because temporal lobe is closely related to the limbic system, and personality changes and the commonest syndromes seen in temporal lobe is Kluwer-Bussey syndrome. Bilateral damage to the temporal lobe can be seen especially if there is a surgery done or else because of viral encephalitis. In such a scenario Kluwer-Bussey can present as hyperphagia, hyperorality, hypermetamorphosis, hypersexuality or else hyposexuality, memory loss and emotional changes can be seen. Another important syndrome, Gestwitz syndrome. Here, in an uncontrolled long-standing epilepsy, especially temporal lobe epilepsy, the person will develop epileptic personality change. In epileptic personality change, also called as Gestwitz syndrome, hyperreligiosity, hypergraphia, hyposexuality, viscosity, and circumstantiality is very well known. Pseudo-philosophical thinking and irritability is the commonest in epileptic personality change. Further, another important systemic illness that is nutritional related that is deficiency of thiamine that is vitamin B1. It is also called as Wernicke's Corsico syndrome. In Wernicke's encephalopathy, there will be a triad of ophthalmoplegia, ataxia, delirium or confusion. Once it continues, it may develop into Corsaco syndrome. Here there will be memory disturbances, confabulation and anterograde amnesia. Hence, vitamin B1 has to be given at the earliest. So, this is commonly seen in alcoholic patients. Moving to what are the temporal lobe tests and how to perform those tests. First and the foremost is recent memory test. Ask for three items to be remembered, ask them to repeat them and tell them clearly the instruction. I will be asking them after 5 minutes. It may be even address test. The doctor can give him a random 
address test which needs to have at least three important sentences and then ask the patient to remember and by distracting him after five minutes ask him to repeat the address at the same time you can ask about today's event yesterday's event what did he have in the morning whom he met and also how did he travel to the hospital with whom yesterday was there any important event so all these will give you a recent memory information whether there is any problem in the patient or else is there a completely intact moving to the remote memory test it can be personal and also it can be impersonal personal memory test can be life events schooling college occupation family members marriage children marriage childbirth child schooling child's marriage and so forth can be asked at the same time impersonal you can ask about the political event when did india got independence when was the republic day other landmark events like maybe gandhi jayanti festivals sports so those are the impersonal question can be asked to assess the remote memory moving to the other important function of the temporal lobe language assessment the speech how the whether the patient is able to comprehend the instruction given whether he is able to speak coherently fluently relevant tone tempo and reaction time for comprehension ask for yes or no questions such as is it raining today is it midnight now who is the chief minister whether it is mr x or y z so the patient need to answer in yes or no questions this can be simple comprehension test it can be graded fashion can be going to the a complex one so if the patient is able to do comprehension that means it's well and good further whether the patient is able to repeat ask him to repeat no ifs and buts whether the patient is able to tell that you can also ask him to repeat the little boy went home or else ask the patient to repeat the old car wouldn't start on monday morning look for the fluency look for the repetition how well he is able to speak so that is the very, very essential assessment of language now moving further you can give him a three stage command test ask him place the index finger of the right hand on your nose and then on your left ear whether he is able to comprehend and he is able to perform this three stage command test further written command test that here the examiner will take a piece of paper on the piece of paper the examiner will write close your eyes ask the patient to read that and perform the command so whether the patient is able to read it comprehend it and perform the function closing his eyes now comes the very important verbal fluency test here the participants have to produce as many words that is semantic as possible in a particular category in a given time ask him to name animals whether first is maybe domestic animals then going to wild animals fruits flowers river name so these are the verbal fluency test so that is one more essential test it will talk about the memory at the same time whether he is able to understand the question and whether he is able to perform that is even the frontal lobe is involved because he has to produce the speech coming to the visual memory here you can take some random four objects which is there available with you as examiner maybe watch pen keys and mobile show to the patient ask them to name them ask them to name the watch pen key and mobile give the instruction that i am going to hide this watch pen keys and mobile in front of the patient inside the room only and tell him i'll be asking after 5 to 10 minutes down the line what are those objects name them how many of them where i am hiding the watch where is the key where is the mobile so those are the questions should be asked whether the patient is able to have a good visual memory can be assessed by using this method moving to parietal lobe now in the parietal lobe there are very important function are known such as calculation reading writing fine touch stereognosis proprioception kinesthesia body schema praxis gnosis 
spatial perception, right left orientation, differentiation in size, shape, color, tactile localization and discrimination. So these are the important function of the parietal lobe. So now let's understand what are the parietal lobe deficits and syndromes seen. One of the commonest syndrome is Jessman syndrome. Here damage to the inferior parietal lobule of the dominant hemisphere that is angular gyrus. If it happens, there are four important symptoms are seen. Dysgraphia, dyscalculia, finger agnosia and left-right disorientation. Remember this, all these three are on the tip of the finger. Dysgraphia, dyscalculia, finger agnosia, right-left disorientation. So when they ask about Jessman syndrome, all these are on the tip of the finger. Remember in this way. The other important is Antono Babinski syndrome. It is equivalent to Jessman syndrome, but it is occurring on the non dominant hemisphere of the inferior parietal lobule damage. Here, there will be contralateral sensory neglect, anosognosia, construction, and dressing apraxia is seen. In Jessman syndrome, dominant lobe, Antono Babinski syndrome, it is non dominant parietal lobe. The other important syndrome is balance, home syndrome, also called as balance syndrome. Here, because of the parietal lobe lesion, the patient will have optic ataxia, oculomotor apraxia, simultognosia, that is, inability to perceive more than one single object at a time. That means, patient cannot see the forest, he will be lost in seeing the trees. That is what is called as simultognosia. Here, if you ask a person who has this balance syndrome, what is happening here in this photograph? He will miss the birthday party. You will be say, you will be saying that a person sitting with mobile, a lady sitting with mobile, another person having a cake and firework. You will not be able to say complete picture. What it doesn't mean? What does it mean? It is a birthday party. You will not be able to understand that. You will be giving individual assessment. That means you will be dividing the whole photograph into individual things. Now let's understand about the parietal lobe tests. First and the foremost is calculations. You can give simple calculation, addition, subtraction, multiple and division. And if he is able to do oral it is fine. Initially give single digit, double digit. And when it becomes slightly difficult, please provide pen and paper to the patient for a complex calculation, maybe division or multiplication. You need to provide, you need to just do not insist telling that it has to be by oral. Even you can do by using the pen and paper. Don't provide calculator. Moving to the other important, naming the fingers, that is finger agnosia. Here in the parietal lobe, if there is a damage, the loss in the ability to distinguish, name or recognize the fingers, not only the patient's own fingers, but also he is unable to name others, that is even examiners and even on the drawing and other representation of the fingers. It will be a classic finger agnosia. Here, how do we test that? Ask him, show me your right index finger. Show me your left index finger. And you can also ask the patient, point towards the examiner's ring finger. You can ask, which is the examiner's right ring finger? So the patient should be able to understand the examiner is sitting opposite to me and he should be able to point out directly to the right ring finger. Now moving to the body parts naming and following the simple command for left right disorientation. Again, if there is a lesion in the parietal lobe, the left right disorientation will be seen. Here, show me your right foot, show me your left hand. These are the simple instructions can be given. You can also cross over his motor action. Touch your right index finger with your right index finger. Touch your left ear. So he has to cross and touch his left ear. With your left index finger, touch your right eye. So these are, these are simple tests can be given for left right orientation. Now moving to the other important testing for apraxia. Apraxia has been defined as an inability to carry out the learned skilled motor acts despite preserved motor and sensory coordination, comprehension and cooperation. 
here the patient will have clear apraxia but however majority of the patient will also have other deficits also maybe motor deficits or sensory deficit but apraxia cannot be just explained on those motor or sensory deficits that's what is apraxia means that is loss of learned motor skills let's see how we can do those tests now testing of apraxia can be done without showing any object here can you show me how you would use a pen the patient has to respond by doing the miming activity can you show me how to use the key you should do a miming telling that i will use the key to lock unlock the unlock it can you show me how would you use a toothbrush you should be doing like this you should not do like this it is usually the full score will be given is able to mime it in a such a way can you show me how would you use your comb so here it will be asked just by miming sometimes you can give all these items and ask him how to use those ask him give him the comb to him and ask him how do you use this at the same time you can also give him a toothbrush and ask him how do you use this here by showing the object without naming it give him the object and ask him how do you use the spoon that means give him the spoon and ask him how do you use it give him the matchbox don't say it is a matchbox how do you use it give him the screwdriver and ask him how do you use it so whether he is able to see relate the object with the particular function moving to the imitation part this is basically idiometer uh, deficit is there or not you will be of testing it the patient is invited to imitate the examiner you need to give a clear instruction i will show you certain gesture you need to imitate them you need to ask sometimes you show him blowing out the candle shutting the eyes waving goodbye sticking out the tongue saluting flipping the coin combing the hair this is he can do the patient can mime it or else ask the patient directly how do you flip the coin how do you comb the hair so the direct instruction whether these functions are stored in his parietal lobe or not can be assessed coming to the other important writing and reading if the patient is educated and is depending upon his educational status ask him to copy sentences or a paragraph give him a dictation whether he is able to write ask him to read what he has written so this will give you again the parietal lobe function moving to the astereognosis this is assessed by asking the patient to close his eyes and give the common objects into his one of the hand that means you need to test both the hands separately you need to give a coin once the patient is asked to close his eyes give a coin in one of the hand ask him to recognize it on the other hand place a key ask him to recognize it so these are the commonest test which can be done bedside further you can also do two point discrimination test and also asking him does he have any illness why he is come to the hospital whether he has insight into illness should be checked the other important is prosopognosia that is deficit in face recognition here you can give well known celebrities or sportsmen's photograph including politicians if he is educated and he is well aware of the current affairs you need to give these photographs and ask him or else it can be personal nowadays mobile phones are available ask the family members to show some of the faces of his own relatives and friends and family members whether he is able to remember them by looking at their face so it will be very easy to test prosopognosia the next one is clock drawing test here again it is not just a parietal lobe or a temporal lobe it is a combination of attention auditory comprehension verbal working memory numerical knowledge visual memory reconstruction visual spatial reconstruction and also on demand motor execution praxis and executive function so all these functions are required and just by doing a clock drawing test will give you a lot of information this test either the patient if he is well educated just you can see 
can you draw a clock or else show this clock face and ask him to copy it look at the way the patients have drawn the first one two are passed the remaining you can see in the score four there is a hemi neglect so here the patient on the right side is completely neglecting it so similarly how the patient has drawn if there is alzheimer's dementia you will not be able to copy the clock or else he is unable to draw it further here you will be giving certain instruction that is three commands test you will give a square piece of paper and you will tell him you will keep that paper on the table ask the patient to take the paper in your right hand fold it into half then again fold it half along the long side and keep it on the table using your left hand so whether the patient is able to perform this test so this is folding paper test and the other important is construction ability here visual motor planning execution and constructional apraxia so these are the various diagrams can be drawn and ask the patient to imitate or repeat it here the patient has to copy them how well he is able to copy that is construction ability moving to the occipital lobe here in the occipital lobe you can see visual perception processing of visual stimuli memory of visual stimuli and integration of visual information so that is occipital lobe further there is very one important anton syndrome very classically known in occipital lobe lesion here if there is a bilateral lesion in the occipital lobe there will be cortical blindness denial of illness anoxognosia is seen and confabulation to fill in the missing sensory inputs of the sensory field that is visual field is common that is anton syndrome moving to the cerebellum the important function of the cerebellum is coordination balance equilibrium to some amount of memory and also organization is seen further going to the brain stem in the brain stem respiration temperature heart beat blood pressure and swallowing these are the functions of the various parts of the brain and how the neuropsych assessment is done and if you are in a hurry don't forget to do mini mental status examination because mmsc will give you a rough idea about the cognitive function of the brain it's a hardly 5 to 10 minutes it is taken to administer this it is mmsc is well known it is written it is available in all textbooks so the first three items will be for orientation and attention and concentration what is the year season date day month where are we now which state county town city hospital floor so and also the memory test is done here he can give unrelated three objects and ask him to remember and ask him to and distract him and after 5 minutes ask him to repeat them now also give serial subtraction ask him to remove 7 from 100 that is 100 minus 7 and also now after he has done the 100 minus 7 ask him to remember the three things which you had told now show the two simple objects inside the room it may be a wrist watch pencil a book on lying on the table ask them to name them now ask to repeat the phrase no ifs ands or buts whether the patient is able to repeat that and also now take the paper in your right hand fold it into half put it on the floor that is a three stage command test which is again easily done here now you need to give an instruction written on a paper please read this and do what it says and the instruction should be close your eyes and finally make up and write a sentence about anything whether the patient is able to write the sentence how well is written ask him to write about the family or the festival and ask him to copy the picture now look at the score you need to add all of the score maximum score is 30 if the patient has 20 to 24 is a mild cognitive deficits anything about 24 will be considered as normal 13 to 20 that means moderate cognitive decline if it is less than 12 severe cognitive decline so if you know all these things by doing just an mmsc you will be able to understand how his brain is functioning 
to conclude my dear friends neuropsych assessment is a very essential part of any assessment especially with neurological and neuropsychiatric assessment it will give you tentative localization tentative diagnosis and management plan if the bedside neuropsych assessment is done by the clinician with all the knowledge about the history the functioning of the patient premorbid functioning onset any medication the patient is on any disability sensory disability physical disability and if he is able to do a neuropsych assessment it will give a good picture about the patient's condition and also he will be able to prognosticate the case thank you very much for giving your valuable time stay safe